Jerry is at the party, and he has been provided beforehand with a link by photo editor Elaine, which is going to allow him to upload from his PC. This also works from a tablet or phone uh, through the Elvis app. By clicking on this, what he's brought to is a sort of silo where he can't access anything else in the system, but he can actually grab the photos that he's already placed on his PC and drag them in. Now, he created a, fo uh, a, a folder structure in there containing videos and photos, and our system is going to maintain that structure after he's done uploading. So when he makes sure that all of these photos get uh, previewed here correctly, he just finishes this, which sort of finalizes the upload, and he goes away and goes back to the party. In a moment, Elaine is going to receive a notification that those photos have been uploaded. Now I've set them to be email notifications. These can come through on Slack or Twitter or wherever you want. So she's received a notification saying that those photos have been uploaded. She can go directly to that link and take a look at those photos that he uploaded, but she actually wants to do some work on these. So she's going to start working in Photoshop. Now we've made a choice as Dillette to not integrate at the app level for something like Photoshop. What we've done is integrate at the operating system level. So Elaine is actually going to log into our app, which is called Elvis, and she's going to see this collection of photos that have been uploaded in her incoming box. And from here, she's going to be able to check these out directly into Photoshop. We've also made another choice to batch check these out so that you don't end up selecting 100 images and having 100 images open in Photoshop at one time. So I'm going to grab these actually first filtering down to just images because I don't want to edit any of the videos. I'm going to grab these in a couple of batches. I'm going to grab this batch and I'm going to go ahead and check this out. And you'll see that these go ahead, it launches Photoshop, and the images automatically open one at a time there. Over in our app, there's an indication that these photos have been checked out. And I'm going to grab the second batch and I'm going to do the same thing, this time from a menu option rather than right clicking. And the rest of those photos open up. Now she can do her color correction. Here, she's smart, she doesn't want to waste time. She's created a batch so that she can run an automate color correct on these guys. Her default action, color correct. She's gonna stop for errors in case there are any. And she's gonna run through these. Oops. Open files. She's gonna run through these and save them as each color correction is made. She can do whatever other work she needs to do in Photoshop while she's doing this as well. And as she closes these, We'll see on the Elvis side that an indicator has been added to each of these pencils showing that that asset has been altered after it was checked out and needs to be checked back in. And this can also be done in a batch. She can grab all of those and she can just check these in by choosing check in. Elvis is going to go out, find out where the file was, grab the modification, pull it in, and it's going to version it. Now, that she's done her work there, she needs to go through and approve these. So she can take these and she can look at them one by one right inside of Chrome here in the Elvis app. And when she's decided which one she wants and doesn't, she wants all of those and she doesn't like this one because she's dancing funny and there's her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and she can go over to her metadata panel and she can find the approval state and choose approved. She can also go ahead and reject if she wants to. If she doesn't want to work in the metadata panel, there are metadata stamps that will allow her to assign multiple pieces of metadata in one click. Those are the images. She's also working with videos here. So she's going to flip over to a video filter just to see what videos were uploaded. Here are two of them. She can preview these as well inside of the app. Not crazy about that one. I think this is the one that she wants. Yeah, she likes that. So she's also going to that this time using a stamp. Finally, Elaine is going to go back to the collection, which she has pinned to her sidebar here. Collections, by the way, are also searchable inside of Elvis, just like assets, so she can run a search for that holiday collection. And it can itself carry metadata, one of which is an assignment. So under followers here, she's going to look through this, and she's going to find George in the marketing department and assign that collection to him. Elaine's done. She goes away. George lumbers in. George's going to log into the interface. 
And immediately, George's view is a little bit different because all George is authorized to see are things that have been approved. He doesn't see anything that hasn't been stamped with that uh, piece of approval. You can actually go ahead and turn that on here if he wants to so that he can view it right on the asset. Now, George needs to add a little bit of extra metadata to a few of these images. He can grab one, and he can come down here, and he can add metadata. And when he's working from a taxonomy, you'll notice when I go into labels here that I'm not allowed to type. I have to choose from a list that has been pre-selected by admin. And he can edit one piece. He can edit multiple assets at one time. And he can set things like the status, which is also from a list. And he can add freeform tags as well. Each field can have its own rule set. So he's done that. Now he has to build a website. And for this, we have, an, uh, we have a plugin that can do this inside of WordPress, inside of Drupal. But I'm going to work today inside of our enterprise app, which has a uh, content builder called Content Station. And I can actually drag these approved images over, drop them in here where it's going to create a reference to Elvis rather than actually copy the image. So these are live images that will end up being published. He's also going to need a logo. So he's going to search for logo inside of the system. A few of them come up. We see that those are all approved. And we can work through these and find, here we go, version four. That's the most recent one. And this is the one that I want. So I'm going to pull this over here. Looks like I get to the wrong place. I'm going to drag it in there. In addition to that, he's going to want to download this for posting on Facebook. So by choosing download, he can download a couple of different options. One of his options is a live convert to uh, Facebook, which is, sits inside of a 640 by 640 frame with 72 DPI. By choosing that, it's going to take the original file, 1260 by 60, and do all of the conversion for him so he knows he can safely save that and then post it up to Facebook. Over here on the website, he's going to go ahead and create a new web page, which we call an article. He's going to click Next. It's going to open up a template for him, which is just a feature template that he knows is what he uses for publishing these photos of parties and events and things like that. And it's going to open a sort of WYSIWYG editor that's going to show me all of the uh, content that I have in that particular, that this is the stuff right from Elvis that he dragged over. And we can go ahead and we can actually just start populating this. Let's say office party. And awesome. And George. And we can come through and we can just start building this right here our text in here, this is the fun group, and so forth, and start dropping these images and adding text. Here's a slideshow, so I can drag multiple images over onto this slideshow, and then here's a video. Two minutes. What I can do is I can jump in here and take a look and find all those videos that we have, and I'm going to do something special with these. I'm going to grab this video, and I'm going to download it. And I'm going to put this right in my web server, GTD Docs, videos, and I'm going to save that. I'm going to replace what's there. And I can drop in a piece of embed code here, which is going to link to that video uh, live for me. And George is done with that while we wait for the web page to publish. He comes over here and he chooses publish. He's going to choose his target, which in this case is going to be my WordPress site, and that's going to go out. In the meantime, Cosmo has come into the system, and he wants to take a look at some stats. And there's a couple of ways we can go about this. He wants to see how things are performing in channels. We have a couple of plugins, one of which is a stats plugin, which is driven by uh, database queries. And anything can be placed in here. We can take a look here and see how downloads are performing over a specific period of time, how imports are performing, and what our growth of assets has been over a set time. We can also take a look on the print side at any uh, individual layout, and we can see what the cost of the images that we used in a layout are. And we can do that by taking a look at human fun. We have a directory here for layouts. I go right in here, grab my layout, and it's a separate plugin which is called Usage Report. When I run that, you'll see that it adds up the cost that I have in the system of all of the different images that have been used in this layout. It can give you a total cost for that layout or that issue. Um, and that's what I got to show over here. If we do a refresh of my website, hopefully we'll see our office party thing come through. And it's just on a cron job, so it's just how long it takes to go ahead and process that. And I would also like. <laughs> <laughs> you can 
To point out that all this was run on a MacBook 12 inch, all the servers are running on this as well as the clients. Cool. You want to come down here for a second? You, 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 no, you don't. <laughs>